All right, guys, are you afraid of linking out? Do you even know what linking out is? We're going to talk about that today. All right, I've got Mark Traphagen with me, and we are talking about linking out. Do you even know what linking out is? Are you afraid of linking out? Are all the algorithm changes on Google messing you up? Are you afraid of link spamming? That's what we're talking about. Hey, Mark, how are you? Uh, I am terrific. Thanks for having me. Glad to be here and uh, excited to talk about this subject. Yes, thank you. And the reason we're talking about this is I just watched you and Eric do a video about this, and then you did a LinkedIn post. And this was really intriguing to me because I think a lot of people don't really know what this is, like what linking what linking out is, what the problems could be, all of that. So you guys hit on some really good points. And so let's just talk about, first of all, what is linking out? What are we speaking of exactly? When we talk about linking out or what some people would call outbound links, these are the links that you actually see when you go to a web page. They're links that go from your site to another site. Now, really, there also can be links that are internal links, which work the same way, but they just go to pages on your own site. So any of the links that you see on a web page, that's what we're talking about, linking out. And uh, the, the real question, I guess, would be, you know, why would people be afraid of doing that? It's what, it's what the web is built out of, right? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Why would people be afraid of it? So let's, let's hit on that really quick. Why would people be afraid of it? Well, first of all, we've seen this happening. We've seen this, this growing behavior, and we see it a lot on some very major uh, online publishers, online very popular sites that have either way cut back or completely stopped linking out to other sites. And that, that's what caught our attention on this initially, to realize just how much this fear might be prevalent. Uh, you know, why, what would stop a major site from linking out? And there's, there's a couple of things that might come to mind. The first one that might be most obvious to people is, well, they just want to keep people on their own site. Uh, but that would have always been true about the web. And I'm sure there's always been people who have limited or uh, even eliminated any links out to other sites from their pages for that reason. They want the, It's a kind of hope to keep people on the site. But we're seeing an increase in this behavior, so it can't be just accounted for by that. Um, there's also another kind of older reason that might still be out there, and that was a, uh, an SEO te technique uh, called page rank sculpting or link juice sculpting. And that gets a little more technical, and without getting too belabored on that, it's simply the idea that um, search engines like Google work by uh, treating links as votes to other pages. So the more, on a simple level, the more links your page has or your site has to it, the more it's authority in Google. But it's not just like a one-to-one -one vote. So um, each site has a certain amount of authority. And when it puts links out to other sites, that authority is the weight of the vote that goes out. But then it's also divided up by the number of links on the given page. So if a page has three links, make it simple, going out other places, then the total link juice or page rank authority going out is divided by three among those links. Now, webmasters used to do a little tricky thing. If they wanted to give one of those links or a few of those links more authority, more link juice, they would tag the other links no follow which tells Google, like, this is a link, but we don't want you to pass any authority through this link. So what used to happen was then that would reduce the number of links dividing up the juice, and they would get more authority. That doesn't work anymore. Uh, now Google still uses the same, uses the total number of links on the page. Each link gets that authority. If you no follow a link to another site, that link just doesn't pass its share of the juice, but it doesn't give that share to the other links. So I just bring that up because there are probably some people out there that think that page rank or link juice sculpting still works, and that's why they're doing it. But we think the biggest reason is the well-publicized now fact that Google has been aggressively going after link spam, which means because uh, site owners are aware that links count like votes on Google, They've done things in the past, and still do, to manipulate those links, even buy them, pay other sites to put links on, or, or in some ways set up things that 
where the links are not natural, but kind of artificial just to get more authority on Google. Well, Google doesn't like that because that breaks their whole algorithm, breaks what they do. So they've been aggressively going after that. And so it appears that there's been some fear, and, uh, and I think as I'm going to say in a moment, it's an overreaction to uh, linking out that if you have a lot of outbound links on your site, that Google might think you're a spammer and you, your site might get penalized. So that's, those are the reasons why we think people are fearing it. And that is a lot. I mean, that you just covered an entire like SEO basics now <laughs> for a lot of people. <laughs> well, but a yeah. go ahead. <laughs> well, there's a lot more to it than that, but that's, right. uh, that's enough for what we're talking about today. Exactly. So when we go back to the benefits of linking out and you talked about authority and you talked about page ranking, and you know basically that link juice well what are the benefits now with all the algorithm changes what are the benefits that a site owner or an author has with linking out well first of all let's uh well yeah i'll come back then and we need to dissuade some of those myths that i just uh, just put out there but, but let me answer your, your question with the benefits the chief benefit is the usability of your site is your site useful to people and if you are uh, citing information, if you are trying to say anything with authority uh, that you're putting out there, you should have some citations. And that, you know, that sounds like it comes out of the academic world, the scientific world, where it's absolutely imperative that you do that. But I think even for everyday blogging, you know, if you make a statement, your readers, you owe it to your readers to back that up. And often that's going to be from a source on the web. And you should give readers the ability to go to that source and check it out for themselves. And it's just goodwill. It's just the way the web, it's being a good web citizen. But as I say, I think the primary benefit is that users will find your site more useful. Uh, so that, you know, that that's the short, there's other things we could say, but I think that's the short answer. And, and I like that. And that leads really right into that user experience. And you guys have talked about that as well. Mm -hmm. What other ways with linking out can a, a site owner or an author really utilize that user or create that user experience that, you know, improves it and makes it better? Well, I think it's just that fact that your, your own content will seem more credible if you have useful links. And there's even some evidence, we don't know this for certain, that being a good resource in that uh, in that way can benefit you in Google. Now, I'm not saying that you get any extra credit for having um, outbound links, um, although it is possible if you're a content, we don't know this again, it's possible that if you're a content heavy site and Google, which is, which is now using its algorithms to look more and more carefully at quality content and quality user experience on a site and evaluate that, that if there are little or no outbound links, it's possible that could be actually counted against you because that's just suspect. That just doesn't seem right. You know, you're not being a good resource. But the other way that it can possibly benefit is just the time that it keeps people uh, from clicking back to Google. Uh, there's, you know, there, there's growing belief in the SEO community that one of the things that Google measures is if a lot of people click on a Google result that come and come to your site and then rather quickly come back to Google and click on a different result, that might indicate that what they're getting on your site is not very satisfactory. But if they're going to your site and you're sending them to other good resources, they're not gonna be going right back to Google. So those are, those are a couple of the benefits, but I think the biggest thing for your listeners to keep in mind is just the fact that you are, uh, you're providing good resource, you're, you're backing up um, what you say and, and one more little tip for people, if you're really concerned about, you know, I don't like sending people off my site, they might not come back. Uh, two things about that. One, I think if the content itself is interesting enough, they're going to do that. I mean, if I go check a link, uh, if the original content was was intriguing to me and, and helping me, I'm going to go back to it. I'm not going to leave it. The second is that if you're really worried about that, you can tag your links in a way that uh, will open up a new tab or a new window on the person's site. So they're not actually leaving your site. It's still there in their browser there. They can get the resource and still have yours. And one of the things I liked that what you said is it, you really 
and I'm going to simplify it, right? You don't want to have no links, so you we want to find that balance of not having any links to having too many links, finding that that sweet spot of of linking out, correct? Yeah, there. Um, in fact, you know that's that's a very good point on the the too many links side. Um, that's something you don't want to do either, but, you know, unless it's a hub page and it really looks like that, like it's a page that's meant to be a resource page listing many other resources. In normal kinds of content pages. Uh, you don't want to have a huge amount of outbound links because that does look suspect. That looks like, you know, something that that's just not, it's not normal. And so the, the, the rule of thumb is not, you know, there's no rule as far as like uh, only put X number of links or make sure you always have this minimum number of links. The best rule of thumb is just be natural. Um, link wherever it makes sense to link where the, where you need to back up some information that you're, you're asserting or something that you're saying, or where it's just going to be helpful to your users to see some other piece of, of content that relates to what you're saying. And that's perfect. All right. So we've talked a little bit about the follow and no follow links. So let's really quickly, can we break down briefly, right? The difference between them and then um, how they can impact both the user experience and then of course the credibility of the site, which you briefly touched on already. Okay. Well, the worst situation, and it's the one that we uh, we mentioned in our video that you saw, uh, is where there's no link at all. I mean, was, you know, the example we gave in the video was we published this major study that we put a huge investment of time and money into producing. It produced unique, incredible information, and a major website mentioned the study, talked about it, used the information, but no link. So giving no opportunity for the users to follow up on that or to see, check us out and say, you know, is our methodology correct? Does our, does our study make sense? They just asserted it and moved on. So that's the worst. But then with links, as I said, they can be either uh, we call do follow or no follow. And do follow is a default. If you don't tag anything, do follow. And by follow, we simply mean you're indicating to Google that um, this link should have some authority. It should pass authority from your site to whatever is being linked to. Does that make sense? And then, so a no follow link is a way of saying to Google, like, we, we want to link to this, but we don't want to pass any authority to it. So the link will still work and Google can, Google can still follow the link. Users can go to follow the link, but none of your sites, um, Google authority or search, search engine authority will be passed on to the site that it's linked to. So that's, that's the basic difference. And that's a lot. So if you guys want to know some more information about follows and no follows, you need to go talk to Mark. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So one, you know, one last thing, if there's, you know, all the algorithm changes, right? There was, I don't even know what they all are. I'm not an SEO person, right? But there's been a lot, I think, over the last six months to a year. And, and I think there's a lot all the time. But how can a site owner and an author stay on top of it, make sure that they're not link spamming, make sure that they're, you know, doing everything properly without without trying to keep up with all the SEO changes? Well, I think it, I think anybody that's running a site these days needs to be on top of at least the basic stuff that's going on in the search world and the SEO world. You don't necessarily need to be an expert SEO yourself. You know, you're running a business or you're doing whatever it is that you're doing on your site. That's not your primary function. But on the other hand, it's good to be aware of what's going on. So the most important thing is to find some credible sources with good, reliable sources that you check every once in a while and just keep on top of the news and, and what's out there and what's happening. You know, I would mention things like um, Search Engine Land or Search Engine Journal, um, Moz, certainly. Um, I would mention our site, stonetemple.com. So, you know, good. It, the important thing is to find good, credible sites that other people you trust in SEO seem to, to quote from, to link to, to share out and then just make that your, your news source um, ongoingly. So I think that's, you know, that's the best thing to do to keep informed. And that's just straight wisdom, staying on top of the, you know, if you're, like you said, if you own a website, stay informed on that. All right, so as we wrap up, any last tips, Mark, for, for the audience? I think the main takeaway is, first of all, on the negative side, don't fear linking out. Uh, do it naturally. Google is getting better and better at ascertaining what good natural behavior on the web looks like. And it's normal and it's natural to link out. Do it because it's good for the web. Do it because it's great for your users. 
do it because it's the right thing to do and don't fear it. Just do it where it makes sense to do it and you'll be fine. So Mark, thank you so much for being on with us today. Where can we, where can everybody connect with you and find you at? Well, I have a very simple answer to that and that is simply Google me. Google Mark Traphagen. Um, I pretty much own, I think I do completely own the first page of Google and you'll find all the places you can contact me there. Perfect. Awesome. So you guys need to really follow Mark and Stone Temple Consulting. They've got tons of great content and valuable, valuable content. That's why I actually pulled Mark in because I watch their content. I read it. I still don't understand it all, but at least I'm learning something. <laughs> so, all right, if you want to connect with us, make sure you hop on over to the forum at rcwomen.com slash forum. And if you want to connect with me, go to dlsmanagement.com and we'll see you guys next time. Bye.